Who here has ever complained about work? Yeah, yeah. Or who here has ever heard someone complain about work? Yeah. I know I have. In fact, I'd consider myself an expert in hearing people complain about work. You see, I've spent the last 20 plus years working in HR, human resources, and across three different continents. And let me tell you that complaining about work is a global phenomenon. My approach in these situations, when I'm in the office receiving a barrage of complaints, is actually very simple. I just sit back, relax, grab my imaginary noise-canceling headphones, and let them get it all out. Because the truth is, I've heard it all before. The broken coffee machine, the micromanager, the measly pay rise, that coworker who always eats the last piece of cake. Haven't we all heard this stuff? It's like a broken record playing on repeat across every office. Which is crazy when we consider that the average adult spends a third of their life at work. If we all want to enjoy our lives, why are we spending so much time complaining about our workplaces? This has been the driving question behind my mission of how do we create thriving workplace culture? Or said differently, how do we create the workplace environment where complaining about work isn't necessary? Now, in offering my perspective on this, let me start by introducing you to the people gap, which looks like this. Complex corporate stuff like Nile was talking about, right? The people gap describes the space between where people and teams are now compared to where people and teams need to be for thriving workplace culture to exist. It's about going from A to B. It's not complex. As I say, simple is not always easy. My mission has been about bridging the people gap and working with individuals and teams to get them to go from A to B so that thriving workplace culture becomes their reality and everyone wins. And it's in this understanding of the people gap that I've been offered the single greatest insight into how outstanding workplace culture happens. So, what is this insight? What is the key to creating outstanding workplace culture? Do you want to know? Okay. We ready? The secret is knowing whether people are above or below the line. Let me explain. People who are below the line rarely make it from point A to point B. These are the chronic complainers, people who are always blaming, being negative, feeling stuck and helpless, taking that woe is me perspective and can often be found doing things like screaming at the jammed printer. An example of being below the line is when I once had an employee request a meeting with me in regards to an incident related to theft, which of course is serious. So I met with this individual, and after a short discussion, I realized that the theft that they were referring to was their perception that somebody had been using their butter out of the communal kitchen fridge without their permission. And no, I am not kidding. People who are below the line are the people who are focused on the problems. On the flip side, people who are above the line are the ones who do make it from A to B. These people are rarely complaining. They're too busy problem solving, brainstorming, and taking action to resolve the inevitable challenges that come up at work, as opposed to complaining about them. I remember a couple of years ago, I attended a leadership conference where there was one leader in particular who stood out to me, who offers a great example of being above the line. 
This leader was talking to his approach in times of crisis. And he shared that whenever things didn't go to plan and things were looking to fall apart, he always asked himself and his team the same question as a starting point. And that question was, what's the best outcome from here? People who are above the line are the people who are focused on the solution. So the line is actually all about your mindset and your sense of purpose. And as simple as this sounds, it's this distinction of being above the line and focused on the solution, or below the line and focused on the problem that is the single greatest learning that I've received about how you create outstanding culture that actually sticks. Now, why don't we take a second to dive into a little bit of the science that sits behind this? Pioneering researcher, Dr. Carol Dweck has done extensive work into the difference between fixed and growth mindsets. When there's a fixed mindset, the belief is that our abilities are set. You've either got it or you don't. Whereas when there's a growth mindset, the belief is that our talent can be developed through dedication, persistence, hard work. Dr. Dweck's research has shown that a growth mindset is a prerequisite to higher levels of achievement. When we have a growth mindset, we embrace challenges, we persist in the face of setbacks, and we ultimately achieve greater success. Whereas when there's a fixed mindset at play, the tendency is to give up easily, to avoid challenges, and to feel threatened by the success of others. People who are below the line are operating with a fixed mindset and limiting their own potential as a result. Whereas people who are above the line, the solution finders, are adopting a growth mindset. And as a result, they're turning challenges into opportunities to grow. Now, if there's only one thing that you take from me today, it should be this. You can't bridge the people gap and create thriving workplace culture without first being above the line. In the same way that Dr. Dweck's research has shown that a growth mindset is required for higher achievement, being above the line is an absolute prerequisite to creating thriving workplace culture that sticks. Otherwise, it's like trying to bake a cake without an oven. It's not going to happen. Now, I know what you're thinking. We're not perfect, right? We're all human. We all fall below the line at times, particularly at work. Trust me, I've heard about it. It's normal to fall below the line. The key is knowing how to pull ourselves back up above it because that's where the magic happens. That's where the cultural transformation starts to take root and we all benefit. So how do we do this? How do we keep ourselves above the line? Well, the good news is that it's my experience that it comes down to three very simple workplace habits that we can all apply. Let's have a look at these. The first workplace habit that keeps you above the line is to be focused on creating success for others. Human beings have this incredible capacity to do more for others than we will for ourselves. It's this beautiful selfless trait that we all have. Just look at any parent. When you make others' success your first priority, you've got more skin in the game to succeed because you're not just doing it for yourself and that pulls you to be above the line. Research has shown that when we focus on serving the needs of others, our brains release the feel-good chemicals like serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin, and this produces profound feelings of positivity and what's often referred to as the helper's high. This same effect in our brains occurs when we authentically serve the development and growth of our colleagues. Your brain doesn't register the difference between volunteering or uplifting a coworker. It just knows that there's altruistic behavior happening. By making it your mission to see others succeed, you tap into that helper's high effect in your brain through your work, and that pulls you to be above the line. The beautiful irony with this is that in serving others first, you end up serving yourself best by being above the line. 
The second workplace habit that keeps us above the line is to know what it is that you really do. Let me give you an example. So I've introduced myself here today as an HR human resources manager, which is nice and simple, right? We all get what it is an HR manager does. But I know that what I really do is create organizational growth and meaningful shared workplace experiences that enhance people's lives. I show up a little differently when I see what it is that I do as that, as opposed to just seeing myself as an HR manager who listens to people complain. It's like the classic parable of the three bricklayers who rebuilt St Paul's Cathedral. When asked, what are you doing? The first bricklayer replied, I'm a bricklayer. I'm working hard, laying bricks to feed my family. The second bricklayer replied, I'm a builder. I'm building a wall. But the third bricklayer, who was the most productive of the three, replied with a gleam in his eye, I'm a cathedral builder. I'm building a cathedral to the Almighty. That's the difference. If we decide that we're here to do our work, or that we're here to build a career, or that we're here to fulfill our mission, we show up radically differently. Knowing what it is that you really do and connecting to that deeper meaning and purpose that sits behind your work taps into your drive and that pulls you above the line regardless of the context. And finally, the third workplace habit that keeps you above the line is bringing your energy. As simple as it sounds, the level of energy and enthusiasm that you bring to each day is directly correlated with how successful you're going to be. Haven't we all had times when our energy's been low, we're feeling tired, and it's so easy to get dragged below the line to only see problems and feel like those problems will never get solved? Whereas when our energy is an eight or a nine out of 10, suddenly we become the solution finder. I remember when there was an HR intern that I was working very closely with and coaching and mentoring, and she, she was awesome. Bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, full of enthusiasm and full of questions about anything and everything to do with HR. I remember my interactions with her would vary based on what my energy level was like. If I was feeling tired and exhausted, her 20 questions that generally came within 30 seconds would hit me like a tidal wave and I'd feel like I was drowning and I'd often need to suggest that we set up a meeting tomorrow to talk about it. Whereas if I was feeling good and my energy was high, I loved her questions. I encouraged her questions. I could see that that's how she was learning and growing and developing and it reminded me of myself when I was young and curious, inquisitive like her. She was the same. Her energy was always high, but it was my fluctuating energy levels that changed the quality of our interactions. Your energy matters, and being deliberate about maintaining it throughout the day keeps you above the line. Now, the basic principles of healthy living that center around stress less, move more, sleep more, eat less, definitely have their part to play with this energy concept, often branded as workplace well-being in the HR universe. It might be something as simple as getting a standing desk or cutting out that evening glass of wine or maybe just a little bit less time mindlessly scrolling on your phone. That's the habit that helps to keep your energy level high. At the end of the day, it's your energy that pushes you to go from point A to point B. And while it can be easy to take it for granted, our physical vitality should never be underestimated. It really is the secret source of fuel that pushes us to be above the line, no matter what life throws our way. So, here's the crux of it. Bridging the people gap actually sits with you. Thriving workplace culture is something that you get to co-create in making the decision to live above the line. You don't have to wait for the right leader, the right team, the right job, the right time. 
you actually just need to wait for yourself to make the choice to focus on the solution instead of the problem. It's really that simple. And it's so empowering. Choosing to live above the line is what creates the workplace environment where complaining about work isn't necessary. Now, you know those times in the office and in life when everything just flows, everything works, or you know you can make it work? What's really happening there is that you're living above the line. You're being focused on the solution, and what you focus on is what you get. Why don't we look at the world of work from above the line? That promotion that you didn't get, it becomes an opportunity for growth. That high performer who left for a competitor, it becomes an opening on the team to bring in fresh skills and new talent. That awful boss, life must be tough for them living below the line. The fact is that our work and our world transform for the better when we choose to live above the line. So, to close, I'd like to extend an open invitation to choose to live above the line, to choose to be a co-creator of outstanding workplace culture to cultivate the helpers high through supporting your colleagues, to build your cathedral to the almighty, whatever that is that that means to you, and to bring the most energized and enthusiastic version of yourself to each day. It's my experience that living above the line bridges the people gap and makes you the leader of your life instead of the manager of your circumstances. And to that, I can genuinely say, I have no complaints. Thank you. <laughs>